I barely got any support. And um, when I needed support, I would get a hard time. So finally, I just gave up. I had tried to start a robotics club, bought a bunch of robot kits uh, for the kids. Um, and um, the school people refused to put some simple software like the Python language on their computers. So they just became more and more difficult. For the kids, um, the kids really did very well. I mean, they loved the Scratch Club. Uh, I was amazed at what they could do. And uh, every year there would be one or two kids that were far <laughs> more advanced than I was. They could do things that, that I couldn't. Um, they also were able to use a lot of this stuff. Uh, one of the things I encourage, um, but I also got pushed back from the administration, uh, was to use Scratch for things like making, a, with, with the permission of their teachers, uh, presentations in things other than uh, computer science or science. Uh, maybe do a, a history uh, project where you would use Scratch and bring in pictures and sound. And they seem to like it, and some of the teachers actually uh, started encouraging it. Um, but at least in, in my school, um, it, it's very difficult. If, if it's not in the curriculum, and I understand it, they just don't want to deal with it. But um, they also don't want to deal with it even if they don't have to put any effort or money into it which is kind of strange. So I don't know if other people are finding the same thing. I think the schools are under such stress at this point um, that they just don't want to deal with anything outside of, of what the guidelines say that they need to deal with. Um, but, you know, I guess that's life these days. Yes, uh, it seems to be a global problem. All the schools are very stressed with a lot of uh, topics and things to study. I see, I've been working with students for so long and I work with, uh, I follow them with all, in all subjects, school subjects. Uh, and it's impossible for a child, a student, a teenager, to learn and, and to know by heart at least all these uh, topics because it seems to me that uh, as much the knowledge has grown um, in these decades, uh, the people that are in charge to decide the, 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 the syllabus for the children they want to put everything in, <laughs> into it. It's crazy. For instance, I can see, I can tell you, I'm a biologist. Uh, I have studied um, uh, molecular biology. So I had to study the molecular parts of a cell, for instance, because I do research, I work with that. And suddenly we, I saw that a teenager, 16 teenage year old, had to learn seven types of receptors in a cell membrane, 16 years old. What are that and what are, is it for? I, I can imagine why a 16 year old girl or boy has to learn in this. And then we start talking, okay, the membrane, you know, the cell, and then they didn't know what cell is. They have never seen a cell in the microscope. But they have to learn by heart the same kinds of proteins they have and what they, how they work. It's crazy. I don't know what these this people in schools are thinking about, why they are pushing so much children to, to, to know this. And as a matter of fact, they don't know. They just has to learn by heart to do the test and they forget everything about the day. The worst thing of this is that they start hating school because they think, what, what I have, why do I have to learn this for? And they start not wanting to learn anything. So even the things that are useful or important for their development, um, thinking and things, things they have to learn, they just stop it. They, they are dropping off the schools. 
So I think it, this is crazy. Uh, and I see that as a, in the whole world. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, hi, Ichi. He He's from Taiwan. Hi, Good morning. You're welcome. Hi. Hello. So I don't know how is this curriculum at schools and what I feel is that each more each time they are putting more and more stuff in the curriculum and this is not helpful this is not helping developing good citizens or good thinkers because they are being pushed to know things by heart so how to put creative creativity in this and how uh, we can discuss our oh, learning uh, programming, learning coding, uh, to learning, and not learning to code. <laughs> I can, I can just uh, separate, understand this very well. What do you think? Uh, isn't it a, a one more thing to learn, or how to apply this to the curriculum? Curriculum in our days. That's my 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 question. Sorry. Is it too crazy or too difficult to everybody's <laughs> office? <laughs> Sorry. It's, it's so many questions. So it's uh, hard to handle. Uh, I had a uh, discussion uh, on Facebook with one teacher, I think. And uh, we have uh, put into our curric curriculum uh, our national plan uh, programming and she was she said uh, oh you have to, you couldn't have scratch only you have to have real programming real and she meant text-based programming and then I, I couldn't understand is what is real programming and what is not real pro programming is coding with text is it better than coding with block-based uh, scratch or anything like that so I, I I it's like that in Sweden in these days because everyone is so so scared about in the national plan that says programming and it's not a, a, a huge part it's only a small part so I I'm not really understanding why is text-based better than uh, block-based programming? I love both. Mm. What do you say? Yeah. I, I agree with you, Anders. Um, it, it really, it, the question is why are you learning programming? Are you learning to become a programmer? Or are you trying to learn how to uh, be able to sit down and analyze problems and break things down at the small which which you need that for anything that you do it doesn't matter what you're in uh, starting with I think starting with with the block uh, programming one it's intuitive uh, it, you know if you see kids when they learn scratch I know when I had the club uh, I had I the first year I did it I spent the whole summer putting lesson plans together and uh, first session I started going through my first lesson plan and I can see in their eyes they couldn't care less about what I was trying to tell them so I just let them go and within a week these kids were doing incredible things so they learn all of this stuff intuitively once if they're interested and want to become programmers then to me the important thing is yeah I, I think you have to learn a text programming language because no one is doing any real uh, programming work with, with the block language. But if you use the block language, you have all of the basics down. You understand basically what a computer language is. And now you have the flexibility of the text language. And you don't have to, you know, it, it's just easier to learn. 
if you go straight to text, you have to learn the concepts and the peculiarities of whatever language you pick. So um, to me, I, I agree with Anders. It's not either or. It should be, in my opinion, it should be both. And, you know, uh, there are times where it's just more fun to do the block. And if you can get whatever you need to be get accomplished, use it. That's just what I'm thinking. I want to add to that, too. I, I agree wholeheartedly what you're saying, especially at the elementary level when you're dealing with um, non-readers, because I like the younger, the better. So you're giving them those foundational you know, ways of thinking. And um, that's something that you can't do if you're starting off with you know, a language like a Java or something like that. You're too busy teaching, actually, the syntax to it. So it's, it's an entry level. And from there, they can move on. But you've got to get them thinking in that, in that manner. Get the, like you said, get the concepts. Like Alan was saying, you know, the, the idea of breaking down a, a big problem to a smaller problem. Um, and from there, and, and, it just, and it does spark the interest for some to move on to something a little more complex. So, yeah, I, I mean, that's mostly what I do. I do a little bit with my fifth graders with the we're just starting, which is not really coding, but we're just starting HTML just to get the experience of, um, you know, typing out commands and things of that nature. So, yeah, I, huge, huge with the scratch. Okay, I agree with your opinions. I think uh coding education and programming education has uh two sides one is uh, uh expression of you know, students ideas and the other is improving problem solving you with programming so low level or entry level novice use the block programming language like uh, scratch yes uh, it is very useful for they're expressing their ideas and the other is the problem improving problem solving uh, use the uh, text coding uh, for example python or javascript it's very useful for uh, real world problem uh, problem solving so uh, we can choose uh, what is the purpose for education or, or for programming education so uh, we use in elementary school students for elementary school students we use scratch and high school students we use python in korea yeah it depends on the purpose of educational uh, educational uh, educational content you are educational purpose so one king let me ask you something uh do you think you are working with the teachers uh, making this new plan general plan for education in your country so uh how the teachers are feeling these changes uh are they feeling their themselves very overwhelmed you i mean or it's one more thing to us to do something else we have to learn to teach uh is it it is difficult for us how do you think they feel this change okay uh, some of korean people feel uh the change of educational systems and they uh they feel then recognize the change is based on computational thinking or computing powers. So uh, they try to learn the coding education or how to teach uh, programming to their student. But many teachers, many teachers uh, feel these changes uh, exactly. So uh, they afraid of learning a new stream 
for example, for coding education for our programming education. But our educational systems is national curriculum system. So we change the national curriculum system for computing education. So in elementary school, all students can learn the programming and coding uh, with uh, uh, seven, 17 hours uh, for uh, fifth and sixth grade student. So all elementary school teachers can learn how to teach programming to their students. And uh, um, secondary school teachers, well, we have the uh, uh, subject for information or informatics. So a special, uh, special informatics teachers can teach uh, how to uh, programming or how to call uh, they are express, uh, for expression, uh, students' idea for problem solving. So, uh, teacher training problem is uh, the important uh, to ed programming education in Korea. So, we will try to uh, made, make the teacher training course for coding education for programming ed educations. In these days, many, many teacher training course for uh, programming education for K-12. Yes, we are trying to their ability to uh, teaching skill or uh, make a, uh, learning and teaching strategies. So we will try. Okay, thank you. Just for those who doesn't know, uh, in his presentation, um, So Han King told us that by 2018, next year, all the teachers for its fundamental school has to learn to uh, coding because they are going to, to teach all the subjects as well as N plus coding, isn't it? By next year's, the regular fundamental school teachers has to teach also coding in class. That's the <laughs> big challenge. <laughs> big challenge in all elementary school teachers uh, have to teach the coding, but uh, secondary school, uh, we have uh, informatics teachers. So they do teach the programming areas for in programming education. But elementary school teachers uh, do teach all subjects. So they have to learn how to, co how to teach the programming to their students. Oh, same as Japan. Yeah, right. Japan's government decided uh, to teach uh, programming 2020, but uh, elementary school teachers are very busy. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, it is very difficult to learn how to teach coding. Of course, um, the, um, many people, uh, teachers are very uh, very um, to to to, uh, to prepare, open to this uh, new to prepare the. Uh, uh, how to teach the uh, coding, but it is very difficult. Yeah, and of course, uh, co coding in the, the text space and coding in Scratch uh, is uh, also the um, program. But the elemental in elementary school, 
um, probably Scratch is the only way to select. Uh, I think so. I think. But uh, mm, I, I'm a, uh, teaching in the college, so I, I'm teaching in the text base, but uh, uh, elementary school, junior high school, uh, in such a school, Scratch is the best way to teach the coding. And also, uh, Scratch is not only a coding, it's a, a presentation tool to, uh, so um, it, it's um, good for uh, them, good for the students, I think. Uh, so we can see that this is a global tendency. Uh, maybe we are going to, to in this way, in a couple of years too. And people from Asia seems to be in, in the front uh, in this way because they are. Uh, we discussed P about PISA, this international ranking for schools, uh, worldwide ranking. And we see that uh, countries such as um, China, Taiwan, uh, South Korea, Japan is in the very <laughs> first places in this ranking. So we have maybe I know pizza is not the main better thing to think about creativity, but they are doing something right because they have developed a lot as country as well as well, not only in doing tests. So the question is how much important is to develop educational system pushing these aspects and how this can develop a country so for the people in europe or america what can we learn from this ancient people and what are they doing well that we should learn it from them what do you think? I think first we have to be willing to learn from them. Um, I, I don't speak for all Americans, but we tend to think that we know best. So um, again, there's, there's a lot of pressures here. In the United States, there's no national system. Um, it, it's, it's all, no, normally it's by states and they're floundering around with, with trying to develop standards. Um, in, in the few years that I was in the middle school, they went through two different standards. Uh, on top of that, um, the teachers' uh, benefits are being cut. So, I mean, there's so many pressures that they, they are not focusing on really getting the kids taught. They just want to measure, supposedly, what they learn, whether they actually know it in the next year or not. Who knows, because they don't measure it again. So they, uh, they, they just tutor the kids. The kids don't really care. Uh, they get through the tests. They, they teach to the tests. And it's just not a good system. And, and there's certainly, I mean, I'm sure there are you know, a lot of people who are looking outside of the states um, at the academic, at, at you know, the college level, people who teach teachers. But within the schools, they don't have time to do any of this. And um, you know, there's just not the resources at all. And again, since it's state by state, each state is different, and it's it's a crazy system. I mean, the United States is does some things that are a little bit different uh, than other countries. Uh, they tried doing a national system, and uh, the states really rejected it. So um, we are where we are, and and here in the states, I, I'm not sure where we're going with this. Uh, what tends to happen is the good students do well only because they would, in any case, 
and a bunch of students, uh, and especially in uh, impoverished areas, get left behind, and, and it's it's really sad. Um, so I, I don't you know I don't have I don't know what the answer is. Um, it would be great if we did share with other countries, but we don't. And uh, um, you know, th th this forum is probably the only one that I know of where people share things. Anyway, just my two cents. I was going to speak to that as well. I mean, in the state, it's tied to the funding, the money um, that funds the public schools. And at least in Delaware, the common core is what the concentration's on. Um, that's a set of standards that's supposed to be across, you know, most states are supposed to have adopted. I'm not sure. Alan, maybe you know. I don't know. I think most states have the common core, um, but that doesn't include computer science in that. So there, my concern has always been how to bring computer science within the, within the classroom um, when it's something that's not being measured. And it's, if it's not being measured, there is no funding or, or necessarily uh, administrators that are supporting it because they're not being measured by what the students are doing. Um, and my, and I like, and there's a push now for the coding, 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 coding. It's kind of the trend word, but there's more to computer science than coding. Um, and uh, that's my concern, is they'll get behind something, but they'll get behind it in a very super, um, um, a very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not an authentic way of getting behind it. It's just a trend and not necessarily getting to the, to the meat of the subject. And we can teach them the code, but we need to teach them the concepts behind it and also show them how to use that for their creative expression. So that's what I wanted to, to talk a little bit about is we all have our restraints and, but, and you hear a lot of people talking about innovation. That's another word that you hear about, but how do we, and you know, going outside of the box, but how do we teach within the restraints that we have and bring this creativity, um, in a way that that's going to impact our students um, and because we can't change some of the the restraints that are around us necessarily but we can work within that box and, and find a way to to bring the creative computing in and that's what i'm always concentrating on and that's what i'm trying to find out how other people are doing that as well you know, that's something i'd like to maybe for us to discuss too as well i don't know that makes any sense. All that. <laughs> Can I say something? Sure. Well, Go on, Veronica. I, I want to tell you a um, long time ago in 1984, um, um, two engineers from the university, they start a program with children um with uh, computers and they bring computer they brought computers from the usa to uh the technological museum and but the the first uh, the first uh, reason they want to have with the the coding was they want to have self esteem and the children who are going to be there they don't. They don't need uh, more than uh, if you, they said. If you have self-esteem, you can be whatever you want. That's what. That was the philosophy, and I think um, a lot of teachers in Mexico. We have a rainbow. A rainbow in Mexico because we have only one minister of education in all the whole um, country. But um, we have uh, private schools, uh, very good private schools, public schools with a very good uh, public schools, but not all the people, not all the teachers um, know how to code. Then, um, the many, many years from here, uh, we are trying <clears throat> to uh, tell the teachers, you are um, you are the the change. You are the person who could change things 
if you know more. And this is uh, now is changing in Mexico. We have a lot of, of uh, courses. We have a lot of workshops. But the worst thing is we have a minister of education who is friend of our president. <laughs> That's why <laughs> we, you, we, we can change if you have politics people, educators in the minister of education. Because uh, we need to change that. In that place, you need people who really knows what they want and what is the history of everybody of of the computers in Mexico. We are working in that a long, long time ago, and we are trying to change this kind of politics, giving tablets but not giving programs. Uh, and we are trying to do that. Yes, Veronica, I agree with you. I think uh, this is one problem we have. Uh, I think in our curriculum is crazy like this because the people uh, in charge of deciding uh, the curriculum of each subject <laughs> knows nothing about education or pedagogical stuff. So they just put topics and topics and topics and it's crazy. Uh, what, uh, what we see here is that people are just dropping off uh, the schools. Even people who has money, who can pay for a better school, they are just dropping out the schools. Many times very good colleges, they live at the second or third year. And the sad thing is that they are not happy at all. They are leaving because they don't like, because they believe that college and this kind of education is going to lead them to nowhere it's not helpful it's not solving the problems in the world and they are living to be alone and depressed and we are seeing this each time more here in our country they just don't like school anymore not only poor people at all it's a general problem and the sad thing is that they are Hopeless, hopeless. It's so I think it, it, they go to school since they are two or three years old and pass all their lives in school and they are not happy. So it's, it's very important this. Uh, I used to ask my students, uh, so you don't like school, what do you want to do? Uh, so, just if you, you are not, uh, you don't have to go. Do you want to do, do work with something else? They just don't like, they just, just don't know what to do. So, as you, uh, you told us, Veronica, if us, not teachers that are the owners of the knowledge, but as people that has lived for more, has studied for more time, uh, I think we have this responsibility of helping uh, to show them the way. And I used to tell to my students, even though the schools are <laughs> terrible, unfortunately, today we still have to go to school and have a certificate uh in order to have a voice and and make difference in this world so we are here as educators as teachers and so we have this conscious that how important education is and how many problems and fails we have to face to to and struggle with that so I'm happy that in Mexico this is already changing. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica. We we think um, 
the meaning of the education is to give the same opportunities to everybody. If you give the opportunities, not this kind of things. This, if you give this, but empty is the same. But uh, if you give the opportunities, because I, I have teaching for a long time. I am, now I am 20 years retired, 20. And I love to teach. I'm still working because I love to do it. I, I, I work with, um, at the public schools for 30 years. And uh, 20 for myself, teaching teachers, because I love to do that. Um, and uh, when I go to the workshops or when I went to the Congress or when I go to some uh, little, little, little towns and I see the people there and the teachers without nothing doing their work, I'm really, really enjoy uh, and I really be happy to be a teacher. Then um, uh, every every day, this Saturday, we we have a, a workshop uh, with some teachers. And the first one thing uh, we try to put the four P's: the play, projects, um, uh, passion, and the peers in that uh, workshop, and it really works. It really works. There were uh, teachers from different levels, from different places. And when we start playing with them, uh, singing and uh, saying hello, uh, dancing and things like, like that, and we, we became uh, peers. And then um, we start uh, with um, uh, robotics, the know how they could use the robotics and why they could use it, because one of our friends are so smart in that. And it, this is a really, really nice workshop. And because you, you can touch them and say, you can do everything if you want to do it. And I think this is the meaning. If you can, want to do it, you're going to do it. And this is my my labor and that's what I do every day. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. So. <laughs> um. I think we have much things to think. Everybody thinking, he brings Tommy here. Uh, that's good too. <laughs> it's, so, um, someone else want to talk something? Make some uh, well, suggestions? Only, only I'm going to tell you uh, this uh, Tuesday and the hangout with uh, Mitch Rednick, I told him uh, in Mexico, uh, we have 72 different native languages. And um, Yolanda Campos Campos, one of my uh, colleagues, she um, translate Scratch from, to seven native languages. Uh, years ago, and uh, we sent, uh, she sent this to Mitch Resnick, but it doesn't happen, nothing. And this Tuesday, I told him, we have seven uh, native languages uh, in Scratch, and he said, okay, send it again. And this is the meaning, if you try to change, uh, and you uh, uh, give the power, to those people who maybe they don't speak in Spanish like us, they speak in their own language, they know they have another language in the code. And code is a language. Thank you.
Okay, uh, so we discussed a lot about this stuff, and I'd like to, to invite you to... Uh, I'd like to ask, as a matter of fact, I would like to ask you, uh, what do, would you like to discuss in the next sessions? Uh, I hope Alan could present his work in next session. Uh, he has prepared a presentation, unfortunately he couldn't present it last week. Uh, he has this presentation and he has something very interesting that he's working on now, an interface for Scratch and Microbit. And please, Alan, uh, talk to us what you're doing and how can you make a presentation next week and please uh, I'd like to listen for you all what you'd like to discuss learning in the next two sessions too. Okay, I'm not sure if I, I have other obligations normally on Saturday so it's for me it's not the best day uh, at least at this time. Um, I tutor um, I'm, in a, I'm a literacy volunteer, which means I teach um, adults who are either illiterate or are learning English as a second language. So I have a, uh, a student that I meet every Saturday. So um, from my local time, it, uh, I, uh, after noon, after uh, 12 o'clock noon here, uh, I would say 1 o'clock by the time I get home. Uh, I'm available, but that's probably pretty late for a lot of people in other areas. Uh, it's it's um, it would be another three hours. Um, I might be able to arrange something with the student, but anyway, I, I I'd be happy to. I can give you a quick idea of the kinds of stuff I'm doing. Uh, I've written a lot of um, packages that interface um, Scratch to um, these little microcomputers like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. And one of my users had sent me some email saying, can you do the micro bit? Um, as a matter of fact, I can show you what, that, what the micro bit is. Um, I don't know if you can see it. This is a micro bit computer. It's really tiny. You can see here's my hand. Uh, but it's got a lot of stuff on it. It has uh, a little display in the middle that uh, is a 5x5 five five LED matrix. It's got a magnetometer, it's got an accelerometer, it's got a whole bunch of sensors. Um, and I can, let me bring it up on the screen because I have something here. He is showing his own <laughs> microbit. Um, <see>. From Taiwan. <laughs> you were working with this too, Ishue? Let me share my screen so you can see. see figure oh, out. great. <laughs> uh, I think that's here. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out where I share the screen. <laughs> I don't see the. Uh, is that in. Nope. It should be uh, up left. Up left. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the green, I think it's the green, uh, the second one. Uh, second. May, maybe you're on, on a Linux machine, so I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, it's just a normal interface. Let's see. It should be the second one with a, a green uh, screen and a white arrow. Oh man, I should know this stuff, but I don't. Uh, you, uh, when you push your cursor on the left, it appears. The menu appear, appears. Chat. Can you see that? Ah, there we go. Okay, now I see it. So let me okay. now. Uh, share and let me bring up. Uh, can you see this? No. Oh. Let me go back. Hey, 
uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her name. You issue it? Uh, maybe. People from Taiwan is doing a lot of stuff with this micro bit too. Would you like to, to show something? You could present next week too. <laughs> is the screen <laughs> shared at this point? Yes. Oh, yes, now it's see. working. Yeah. Okay. It's working. Thank so, you. Let me, let me make this larger so people can see. What I've done is, Scratch has this thing called an extension where you can create your own blocks. All of these blocks are blocks that I created using their specification. Um, unfortunately, like with uh, adding other languages, Scratch is not too receptive about um, uh, physical computing. And it's been a fight to, to get them to do anything. And uh, they constantly change things. They break things. Uh, they don't document it. And they're, they're impossible to deal with. Um, I had gone to Mitch Resnick also. Something worked for a little while. But you know, I really hate to use him all the time. But anyway, this <laughs> is for the micro bit. So to give you an idea of what, what's going on is the micro bit has uh, um, a bunch of sensors. So there's something like buttons. And I have, I created a block that says, there are two buttons, so button A, if I press button A, and I'll, I'll give you a demo uh, showing with the um, display in a minute, but if I press it, it says it's true, and also here, when I press it, I am pointing, uh, um, I change how the cat is pointed, and I also, I have something going on with the LEDs, which I'll show you in a second. So if I press button A, I do this bunch of stuff, and, and there's something going on with the display. Uh, you can tell if the board is tilted. So if I have it in my hand, and I tilt it one way or another, I'm moving it towards the left. I'm sorry, wrong way. Um, you can actually have things change, and then you can affect things on the screen. Um, let me just get out of sharing and I can, let me run this thing. Uh, and let's see. And Am I sharing or is my, is it still sharing? No, oh. not sharing. Okay, do you see me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is hold this up and if I press the button, the program is rotating an arrow one direction. If I let go, it stops, press it the other way. And this is all done with those scratch blocks. So there's no programming on the micro bit. It's all done in the scratch blocks. I have another program that it connects to that does interprets the scratch blocks and sends it to the micro bit. So with something like this, the kids really love this. I had another one. Uh, there's another board. But uh, the, by the way, this is it's really inexpensive. This thing is about ten dollars. And the advantage of using this over something like an Arduino. Arduinos are great. I love them. Uh, most of my programs uh, have been written for it. But in a classroom, Arduinos are not really all that great because you have to wire things up. You have to make sure that it's wired correctly so you have a bunch of wires. Um, give you an idea of what it might look like. I don't have anything wired up here, but you use one of these things which is called a wireless breadboard and you plug things in from the Arduino into here and you put LEDs into the wireless breadboard. You got a bunch of stuff that you are, it's very easy to lose. With something like the micro bit, not only is it cheap, but it has everything integrated. So there's nothing to lose. Um, there's another board. It's made by Arduino. It's kind of expensive. 
it's this thing called the Explorer. And I wrote a program a while back and did a little car race um, with Scratch. And um, when I brought it in, I, this is one of the things that my school administration just did not want to support. Again, wouldn't cost them anything, but it's the way things are there. Um, a bunch of the kids uh, borrowed it and were building uh, their own programs interacting with the board. So this thing has a joystick on it. Uh, it's got a slider, um, like a volume control kind of thing. It's got LEDs, a buzzer, and a microphone. So the kids were having a great time. And and you know, I I don't know if you've if you've had the same experience I did uh, when I t had the uh, coding clubs. Normally the way I ran them, the first session, I would just introduce them to Scratch. Uh, show them what the editor does, and within about 15 minutes, I'd let them go on their own, and you know they would drive how things went. So it, normally, it would be individual kids; they all learned at different levels. But within 15 minutes, I'd start hearing meows all over the place. They discovered the sound, and it's obvious they love physical computing. And once they saw things like this, they they just love it. So it's, it's pretty easy to use. So hopefully the microbit um, program will be coming out within the next couple of weeks. But I got a whole slew of other ones for the Arduino. Same kind of thing, custom blocks. The Arduinos are rather um, low level, but you can build your own uh, in the make a block section to make things easier. So like to turn on an LED, uh, you, I, in, in my blocks, you express that in terms of what pin uh, the LED is connected to on the Arduino and whether you turn, set it to a one or a zero. But if you have an elementary school kid, I don't think you really want to sit there and try to explain what a pin is, what a one is, and you know what's the difference between one and zero. So you can create your own block that says LED on or LED off and, and they can use that. Um, it, it's just easier to do. Uh, the other thing also is that um, one of my programs has now uh, been translated, I think, into 12 languages. Uh, the blocks are in 12 languages. And what I'm doing with the micro bit, but it, it's always been a, a hassle. Um, I didn't do the translations, my users did. And it was kind of difficult to do in terms of, of technically, you had to go in and, and modify a bunch of files. Uh, with the micro bit, I'm trying to make it so it's a little bit easier that I don't have to get involved and people can just take the code and, and translate it to their native languages. So that that's about Looks like we're getting close to 10, so I don't want to take up any more time. Oh, that, that's uh, amazing. I, I've uh, used uh, the microbit uh, in schools as well. But it, I saw it, it was only the offline uh, Scratch. Yeah, that's one of the pro See, the problem with, with the Scratch, there are net Scratch now has two different interfaces, uh, specifications. One is offline and one is online. The reason that I'm doing offline was because that was the original one. It actually worked both offline and online, which is the HTTP one. Um, but I also had gotten a lot of my users who would tell me that um, they don't have uh, good Wi-Fi connections and they needed to use the offline. So I stuck with it. I also did some for the online, which uses a JavaScript interface. And, and those run on the Scratch X um, um, site scratchx.com, I think it is. Uh, also, the Raspberry Pi, they're using that with the Scratch that they're now supplying with it. ScratchX is a big pain in, in, you know, to, to deal with. One, um, it, it, it's not that it's a difficult interface, but once you get it done, you have to get, if you want it to be on their website, you have to get approval. Um, uh, they just don't support it. They're, they're just not very, very... Um, pleasant about supporting it. If you have questions about it, they don't answer them. You know, it's, it's, it's grad students and you, know, you can't, I, I understand that too, it's a matter of funding. But ScratchX to me is a disaster. Uh, I had tried to explain to them what they should be doing is develop a specification where the kids could build their own things. You know, it doesn't have to be at a physical computing to build your own blocks so that you may want to do um, you know, something fancy, um, you know, so some math stuff that you want to do and you want to have a block to do that uh, instead of just, you know, with the basic mathematics stuff. So maybe, you know, you have something a little more advanced. And they're just not interested in doing that, which is, which is a shame. But you're correct. This is all in the offline. Uh, 
um, editor. And one of the problems with the offline editor is now that they do not support Linux. They say they do. Uh, good luck if you try to install it on Linux. It doesn't work. Um, one of the ones they have one on Scratch X for the micro bit only works on Macs. I don't know how many schools use Macs. So uh, to me, it just doesn't make sense. Hmm. Could, uh, could you share your uh, your code somewhere? Do you have oh, a yeah, yeah. So all, all, everything I've done is on, on GitHub. Yeah. So all my stuff is open source. Uh, I hope it's well commented enough. I do support it. Uh, people do ask questions, and I, you know, I'm, I'm very open with it. I don't. Uh, I'd love to make money off of this, but it's not something that you can make money off. Of. I've been doing this <laughs> for my own enjoyment because it's a lot of fun. Uh, I had no intention of doing microbit because I've done enough of the scratching of cases. They're not all that pleasant to code up, and um, but. This guy pleaded with me, so I figured for 10 bucks I'll take a look. And it's actually, it's pretty good. Microbit, I'm very impressed with the Microbit uh, because they, they use, to program it, uh, they use two different languages. JavaScript is one, and they have a block language where you can program it, or you can do it in straight JavaScript, or they have Python, which is not block. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm using Python, but it's, it's kind of strange because they have a Python interpreter built in I don't have, I, I have no code on the micro bit. It's all from my, my side. I'm sending commands in Python to it, and it, it remotely executes those Python commands. I, I never saw anything like this before, but it works pretty well. Uh, excuse me, may I say something? Sure. Uh, uh, my name is Yi Xue. Uh, it's from Taiwan. Uh, uh, I think Alan is my in my heart is my is a god for i i built a transformer is uh is uh it for your s2 way to to build it and now i have a building for micro bit for scratch sensing <laughs> so i seem very happy for this uh idea i say uh maybe maybe I, I I really want to add for your Facebook friend. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Yeah, and I, my my code is all online. If if you're familiar with GitHub, um, if you look for um, it, on Google, if you go to search, put G I T H U B. Actually, if you want, I can I can go to the site if people want to see it. I don't know if you want to, want me to take up time doing that. You can see where my stuff is, or if you send me an email, uh, I'll be happy to just you know send you a link instead of taking up everybody's time. Oh, you, so, you could you could uh, put the link into the chat. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. <laughs>